Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Vikram Maskar, a knee and shoulder surgeon from New Delhi, India and welcome to another video and in this video we're, we're going to be talking about knee injections. How are they given? What are the type of knee injections? I hope you get a lot of information about this and you can understand and make an educated decision as to what's right for you. Firstly, what are the types of knee injections? Number one. The most successful and famous knee injection is something called a corticosteroid. What is it? So remember, steroids are anti-inflammatories. They reduce inflammation. So they are quite infamous because a lot of people are scared of them, but they have a great role. In Corona, a lot of the medicines had no scientific value. The only thing that saved people were these steroids because Corona produced a lot of inflammation and steroids reduced it. So your knee can have inflammation because of aging, because of degeneration. If this inflammation doesn't come down with tablets, you can get a corticosteroid injection put into your knee. It's done under sterile conditions and very important to be sure that if you're diabetic, your sugars are under control because it can increase sugars a little bit. So corticosteroids are scientifically proven to be very effective and are the mainstay of injections in degeneration especially where there is swelling in degeneration because many times the pain is not only because of the friction it's also because of the swelling this takes care of at least the swelling part of it for some time second is prp so what is prp prp means platelet rich plasma so what you do you take the blood out of an individual out of the same person put it under something called a centrifuge which is a machine that rotates at around 6000 revolutions per minute this separates the platelet part of uh, the blood. That platelet part is loaded onto an inject into a syringe and given into the painful part. This has be, been met with reasonable success. However, scientifically, it hasn't really been proven in the knee as much. More evidence is present for problems like tennis elbow, but it's been given worldwide in the knee too and is FDA approved. Apart from that, you have something called growth factors. Now, growth factors are similar to PRP, but you isolate certain things called growth factors in the blood. These are again injected into the knee. How do you get these growth factors on? The process is the same. You take out blood from the body, you put it in a centrifuge, take out the growth factor concentrate and give it into the knee. Little more success than PRPs. There's more evidence to prove, but still not as conclusive yet. Apart from that, you have hyaluronic acid. So what is hyaluronic acid? It's the substance with which your cartilage is made, right? Your cartilage is made of hyaline cartilage. Hyaluronic acid is the basic substance from which hyaline cartilage is made. So these are preloaded injections that are manufactured by companies. These are given into the knee under sterile conditions to be sure that a lubricant layer is in the knee joint and it prevents friction. Now, these have been met with reasonable success, not a very conclusive evidence about them available in the market, but how effective they are is hard to say. Time will tell, but it's a, it's a useful stop shop option if you're not yet considering surgery. The last among these is stem cells. Now, stem cells, what are these? So think about it. How does a cell become a particular cell in the body? So let's assume you are an engineer. How did you become an engineer? You went to school. You had a lot of classmates in school. All of them studied well. After 12th grade, one said I'd do uh, engineering. One said I'd do medicine. Actually, in 10th, we decide whether we take maths or we take biology. Some become chartered accountants. Some become uh, call center employees. So how do you decide that? There is a natural selection based on the interest of the student. And he goes into that. Same thing in your body, all cells in your body, those that make bones, blood, etc., brain, heart, they're all derived from certain cells called stem cells. This is like the school. These stem cells become individual cells based on certain training that they get. What do you do in stem cells is you get autologous stem cells or allo uh, stem cells. So what you basically do is these are either de derived from uh, animal sources or derived from human sources. In India, we have human source derived stem cells. These are derived from human sources and there's a storage and a processing facility from which they are got. 
these stem cells are then in aseptic conditions injected into the knee with the hope that these stem cells generate cartilage over a period of time. How? Because they feel that if I were to send a person to medical school, he's more likely to become a doctor, right? Because most people pass and become doctors at the end of the day. So if you put those stem cells, which are just out of school and have not decided what they want to become, into an environment where there's a requirement for cartilage, they will become cartilage. That is the logic. So they've been met with good success lately. However, conclusively, it being proved is still uh, not up to the mark. We'll have to give it time. But there are publications that have proven that it is quite good. So it's something to consider, especially when you have early osteoarthritis in the knee. Now let's compare all of them vis-a-vis -vis cost, etc. The cheapest and simplest among all of them is corticosteroid. It's not a very expensive injection, easily available. Most doctors would have it in their hospital. PRP growth factors are slightly more expensive. Hyaluronic acid is even more expensive. And the most expensive is stem cells among all of them, right? So this, this is the cost factor. Administration, how is it given? So first, you're called into a clinic. Certain places, like I give it in my own clinic under sterile conditions. Certain people like to give it in the operation theater. As long as sterility is maintained, firstly, you would be made to lie down on a bed. I give my injections ultrasound guided because I want to be sure my injections go where they have to go. So if you're sure where they have to go, the chances of them working are more. So we clean that part a little bit with a little sterilium. We put a sheet below it. The doctor puts on a pair of gloves. He takes a little cotton, cleans the area where the injection needs to be given. In the meantime, the injection is loaded. First, what we load is something called a local anesthetic and then the injection to be given. The local anesthetic is injected with a very thin needle so that you don't have pain. So I first inject it uh, using the ultrasound probe and then right in the right place. Then I wait for it to act. Then I inject the, put in the next syringe. If there is some fluid in the knee, I first aspirate it. Then put, attach the injection that needs to be given in the joint and push it in. Then it's taken out, a small little band-aid like the Hansaplast or Johnson band-aid that you have is put over it. You're asked to sit for about five, 10 minutes and then go home. Normally, we advise rest for the first 24 hours after an injection, a lot of ice packs to that part. You can go about your normal daily activities at home, but no recreational activities like shopping, walking, exercising, etc. The next day, the band-aid can be taken off. You can have a normal shower, get back to your normal life, except exercises for the lower limb. After five days is when you can start exercises for the lower limb also under supervision with a physiotherapist and then ultimately strength and conditioning. Pain can increase for the first 24 to 48 hours, especially after steroid injections. We call it a steroid flare. So we give you a painkiller and an anti-inflammatory for three days so that you don't have pain. And we ask you to rest for 24 hours. The effect of the injection usually starts after five days when it's hyaluronic acid, PRP, GFC or a steroid. Stem cells improve over a period of time, can take up to two to three months to see some element of improvement. Are there any cons? Not really, as long as they're given in the right place. Luckily, they are safe. They don't cause any problem usually, unless it's infection, etc. If you're an unrecognized diabetic, uncontrolled sugars or not given in the in the right environment, otherwise they are safe. Hence, they're recommended by all associations around the world. However, how effective are they to take care of the root cause of the problem is the million dollar question, but they're a great stop shop before you consider any operation that is a quality of life operation. I hope you liked my video on uh, injections. If you like my video, please like and subscribe to my channel and please follow me on Instagram. For those who like Hindi content, we have a Hindi channel, which is a silver button winner. It's in the bio. Please subscribe to it too. Thank you.